before this video, we're going to create this drone arm right here. Just a heads up, we have this cavity that's open, this one that's open down here, open up here, and then this one over here that's closed. Be mindful of this because I made my mistake with this being opened. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started by creating a part studio. So it's right here. Now I have an empty file. So in this situation, we're going to start off by making sure that our units are in millimeters. So go ahead and select this drop down menu. Go to workspace units, make sure you're in millimeters and go ahead and accept. We're going to create our first sketch on the front view. So go ahead and select sketch, reorient. And now for step two, we're going to create the spine with two construction lines. So let's go ahead and select spine. Our first spline point is going to be above the origin. Notice it's vertical. And then the second point will be down here. Hit escape. Now we want to move this point in this direction and this point in this direction over here. So we're going to be a little extra with it. So go ahead and add a construction line. So we're going to place this parallel right above the existing line. Make sure it's lengthy. Then we're going to place another construction line starting at this point above the line for the spine point, the spine point handle, for the spine handle, and just extend it outwards. We'll be needing this in a moment. All right, so notice this white dot should be to the left of the top point, and this should be to the right of the top bottom point. So now we're going to add all of these dimensions. Before we do, let's make sure we add a horizontal relationship here. We're going to add another horizontal relationship here. Okay. So now for our, our dimensions. So our dimension tool, we're going to select this point and this point. And we're going to place it at a distance of 125. The distance from this point to the origin will have a value of 25. And then we're going to zoom in. This point to the origin will have a value of 15. All right, so it's looking good. All right, so we're going to make this spline tangent to this line here. And we're going to make this also tangent to this line down here. Notice I have my tangent tool selected. Tangent and tangent. We're also going to make sure that this handle and this handle are equal to each other. And then the distance from this point, the end of the handle to the spine point, will have a value of 45. All right, and then go ahead and accept this drawing. For step three, we're going to create another handle, but now we're going to go to the top plane. So let's go to the top view. We need to keep our previous view. We'll be using that in a moment. So go ahead and select sketch, top view, go back over here. And let's go ahead and place our first spine point. Notice we need two spine points. So this spine point, we're gonna place it vertically below the origin. And then our final point, we're gonna reorient a little bit. I want this one with a vertical relationship to this point here. So let's just set this down and hit escape. So we're going to click this dot and our spine point end here, both endpoints, and make sure you select vertical. So that'll make sure that this is below or above our previous spine. All right, so let's reorient back to our top view. So notice our left handle is going to be above our spine. And this is going to be below the spine. So let's just move this downwards just so we don't get too confused. All right. So we're going to set these two lines equal to each other first. Short constraints. Let's add a construction line. Another construction line.
We want to make sure there's a horizontal relationship here. Another one here. Now for our dimensions. This point is going to be 15 millimeters away from the origin or below. This other point is going to be 45 millimeters away from the origin. Oh, wait, whoops. This value right here is 21.5. And the length of this spine handle right here, I have a value of 45. And at this point, let's go ahead and accept our drawing. So this is what we should have. A drawing on our front plane and our top plane. So now we can work with this. All right, now we're going to use a loft feature. So go ahead and select loft for profiles. We're selecting this line here and then this other line here. Now we're going to add some curvature. So normal to profile, normal to profile. And the values that we're choosing are two and two. So make sure you select two and two. And notice that we end up getting more curvature. And then we also end up with the surface number one down here. So go ahead and click and accept. For step five, we're just going to mirror our entity. So at this point, use the mirror tool, part mirror, entity to mirror, is this mirror plane would be our top plane. Now we have some more definition and now we're not selecting new, we're selecting add. So once again, part mirror, add surface one, top plane, surface one, and accept. And actually let's select merge with all. Actually, for merge scope, let's select surface one and we accept. All right, so this is, we're going to create this drawing right here. This is actually where our motor will go for our drone arm. So let's go ahead and do this. Notice that we close it off from the bottom and we have an open cavity at the top. And we're doing this horizontal, this vertical line to the left of our spline point. So we are hiding our surface number one. And we're going to view sketch one and sketch two. So let's go ahead and create a sketch on the front view. We're going to do a vertical line to the left of our spline points. So notice that it has a vertical relationship. Make sure you do that. We're going to start off by creating a line down here, a horizontal line. We're going to add a spline point. So we'll do that up here and it ends above this line and hit escape. Now we're going to add a conic. So make sure you have conic and notice that this hand, this portion up here is going to be horizontal to that top point. And we'll just place this one. So we're going to lock this one over here on this side over here and go ahead and make sure it's at, make sure it's a value of 0.5 and hit enter. So keep in mind that these two points are horizontal to this top point. And we check our constraints. This point is horizontal to this point and this point is still horizontal there. So we're good to go. All right. So now we're going to add all of these relationships. So this arm, let's move it out this way. We're going to move this one downwards over here. We're going to add some construction lines. So let's go ahead and add one here and then add another one here. All right, so this and this are going to be tangent. And then this line and this line will be tangent right here. So make sure you select this. This piece right here is going to be vertical. We'll move it out a little bit more just to make sure we get some definition. All right, so we've already made all of these relationships. So we are good to go.
All right, so for step seven, we're having, adding all of this information right here. This might get a little wonky, so make sure you take your time. So at this point, all right, so at this point, we're going to add all the dimensions. Let's start with our bottom dimensions, and we're going to work our way up to the top and finalize our drawing with this number right here. So let's start down here. So notice we need sketch one and sketch two. We're going to look into these points right here, right, left, and then this point right here on the left. So we're going to start off at the bottom. So the distance between this point and this line right here, we're going to have a value of 15. Notice it's shrinking a bit. It's fine. We're going to add another value right here from this top point to this point, the value of 15 as well. We're going to go over here to this value. So this is going to have a value of 10. The distance from this point to this bottom spline will have a value of 20. Let's go ahead and extend this upwards a little bit. The length of this spline handle right here will have a value of 30. The distance from this point to this point, let's be careful here, we'll have a value of 10. So we just did this one. The distance from this point to this line, we'll have a value of 10 as well. This is, looks kind of awkward. Just push this up a little bit. Row value is good. We got 10. The distance from this point to this point will have a height value of 10 as well. So there's one little mistake that I have right here. It's this point right here. So let's delete this relationship here. And we're actually placing this bar right here at a distance from this point here the value of 10. So everything is still well. And now we're going to select this point and the top end of this spline. We're going to put a value of 155. And that's what we want. So make sure you get all of these relationships down. Take your time. This will be kind of frustrating, but it'll work out. And go ahead and accept this drawing. And just to review, we have one, two, three, four values of 10. One, two, three, four values of 10. Two that are 15. One, two, it's 15, a 30, and then a 155. Here's a 30, and then there's a 155. Go ahead and accept this. We're good to go. For step eight, we're just going to revolve what we just made. So go ahead and select revolve. Select surface, new. And we're going to click on the following edges. So select this bottom piece, this here, this here. Our revolve axis is this vertical line. Notice we created the full item. We don't want full. We want one direction. And we're going to add a value of 180 degrees. And let's go ahead and flip this to go in this direction from the front view. And go ahead and accept. For step nine, we're going to be using the split tool. So go ahead and let's view our previous surface. Notice that we have these two surfaces right here that are extending out to each other. So we're gonna go ahead and split this right now. So let's go ahead and use the split tool. So split. So we're now going to select surface one and entity to split with is surface two. So we'll be doing the opposite in the next section. So we're gonna keep our tools and go ahead and accept. For step 10, we're going to split again. So go ahead and select the splitting tool. So in this case, we're selecting surface one. An entity to split with is surface two. We go ahead and accept, but we have to keep our tools. And now we should be good. For step 11, we're going to delete some parts. So go ahead and select delete part. Select this face and then this face and go ahead and accept. Notice we have these two items. We're going to combine them at the moment. So step 12, we're going to use a Boolean function. So select Boolean, click this surface, this surface, and union. 
and we're good. Step 13, we're going to use a fillet tool. So let's move our object over here, select fillet, and select this curve here, and we are good to go. We want a radius of five, and make sure you select curvature, edge, and accept. For step 14, we're going to select these three points and create a plane. This is going to help us to actually solidify the object. So select plane. We want three point here, so select three point. We're going to zoom in right here. Point number one, two, and then the center piece, point three, and accept. For step 15, we're going to enclose our object. So go ahead and find that. So under down, Underneath Thicken, select Enclose. Entities, we're going to select our Surface 1, the Plane, Front, and Right. So notice we close our object. If we select the top view, nothing really happens. So you don't need the top view. And go ahead and accept. Notice we just solidified this object. Step 16, we're going to use the Mirror tool. So go ahead and select mirror, which is right here. We're going to select our part one. Mirror plane is going to be the front view. And then go ahead and accept. But make sure you have add and merge scope is part one. For step 17, we're going to use a shell with a value of two millimeters. So go ahead and select shell, which is right here. Select this top pole. Select this portion. And then make sure this is two millimeters and accept. So at this point, we've pretty much completed this device. So what you're going to do next, you're going to go to the self-check. So make sure that you select the part one, select the mass properties tool, and you should get a value for your volume, which will reflect what your answer should be in the self-check. So in this situation, I check it, and my value is fairly close to what we need to get, and we're good to go.